line 18, box number 3. Am I the one who, who put this box in the locker? I don't remember. I took a room in the first motel I saw. The box from the locker. What am I going to find inside? Gotta open it and find out what's inside. A shoebox? What's the connection with Sean's disappearance?
Sean. Where are you? I'm so cold. Dad. Dad. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why it gives him an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? It builds up a profile of the killer and helps us understand the person we're looking for. It might have been useful if it was done earlier in this investigation. Continue, Jaden. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days but the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about 10 square mile. Ah, oh, great. There must be 10,000 people living in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? It may not give us the address of the killer, but at least it's something to go on. Blake, if you've got a better plan, I'm willing to listen. Don't be shy. I'm all ears. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, and we gotta get off our asses and find him. The killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your vast experience on the job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school book? Your vast experience hasn't prevented eight victims from being murdered. Fucking asshole! That's enough. You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours.
No answer. We waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I had come to Earth to persecute him. Real twisted. Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Where do you work, Nathaniel? Do you have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. Why all the crucifixes? Are you afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I am preparing for the end of the world. Nathaniel, do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here? I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Or we both know who talks to you. Don't speak that name. What does he say to you, Nathaniel? I can't talk about it. You mustn't talk about it. He orders you to go and find new prey, doesn't he? He needs more and more. No. No! You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. He told you to go and find that kid in the park. The voices tormented you all night long. You wanted them to stop, didn't you, Nathaniel? Stop! Stop! That's enough! So you obeyed them to make them stop. You took that boy with you and you drowned him. Isn't that right? 
bike! What are you doing? No! Stop! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you gonna confess, you bastard? You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, I Nathaniel. I shall you to your father in hell. He is the son of Satan. He was sent to earth to destroy shoot, us. For Christ's sake, shoot! Drop the gun, now! Keep calm. Everything is gonna be fine, Nathaniel. Team, you shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power. Lieutenant Blake is gonna leave our planet right now and return to the what? realm of shadows. Creature of darkness, I do beseech you to return to the realm of shadows and leave our Nathaniel in peace. Christ, our powerful. Defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. Concentrate on my voice, Nathaniel. Listen only to my voice. Back away, slowly. Drop the gun. Drop it, Nathaniel. Put your hands on your head. Turn around. I... It was only a crucifix. Can't say I'll miss him. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Anybody home? Yeah. Mrs. Bowles. Oh, Jesus. Wait a minute. Oh. 
Hello, little cutie. Oh, you looking for your mama? Come on, I have to search the house. Maybe it's not too late. Come on, I have to search the house. Maybe it's not too late. This letter. Holy fuck. I hope she... I hope she hasn't... Oh, hang on, baby. First, I gotta find Mama. Come on, I have to search the house. Maybe it's not too late. Come on, I have to search the house. Maybe it's not too late. Mrs. Bowles? Mrs. Bowles, are you there? Mrs. Bowles! Mrs. Bowles, can you hear me? Wake up! Wake up! I'm gonna call an ambulance. No, I... I don't want to go to the hospital. Please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this one with? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Don't move. I'll be right back. Need some bandages and disinfectant. Gotta be here somewhere. Quick, she's losing blood. I gotta hurry. Let's see. I need this, and this, and this. I'm here for you, Susan. You'll be all right. I'll take care of you. Ah, oh, I need more. Still bleeding. Stay with me, Susan. Susan, do you hear me? Not perfect. A little bit. There, I done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Well, luckily the wounds aren't too deep. Hey, how are you feeling? You okay? My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'm a private eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> Her name is Emily. Gotcha. I was a private eye when I walked in here. And now I'm a babysitter. <laughs> Go figure. Mommy will live for now. Let's see how Junior's doing.
Hi there, Emily. So, what seems to be the problem, huh? Oh, going by the smell, I got a pretty good idea.